The telephone building, for example, on Division Avenue is in the Millington's business zone. Uh, the uh, power station on railroad and the power station on valley are both in the uh, conservation zone because that's adjacent to them and utilities, public utilities are conditional use in any zone. Uh, and so the idea is that the P, the public zone, is really reserved for public buildings only. And I suppose you could argue that a utility would be a conditional incidental use, uh, but as long as we're making so many changes to the zoning map, I would suggest that we put this into a, a generic business zone rather than leave it in the public zone. There's no particular reason to leave it in the public zone. But we're, we're doing no a bunch of other things. Not to yeah. There. Yes, I was going to ask you, will this guy fall in if we if we leave it there? Yeah. It what's the downside of leaving it in the P zone? Well, the fact of the matter is, we're we're using this opportunity to clean up 30 years worth of messes in the zoning map, and ultimately there are about 600 changes to be made to the zoning map in in a variety of categories, about a dozen different categories. This just happens to be one item in a category that stands all by itself. Mm. But it's not worth a whole lot of time and effort to talk about this one-off item, uh, considering that there are so many changes that have to be made. This just goes along with the changes to bring the zoning map up to date. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, unfortunately, we can't lump this particular one with any other of the dozen odd sets of changes that are being made. Although, in fact, there is one other P zone building that has to be removed from the P zone, and that's the old library. And I guess that's in here somewhere. I haven't mm -hmm. looked for it. Any other thoughts, guys, so we can move on? I mean, any other strong opinions? I would, I would like to, to talk about a generic issue here. There seems to be a transposition. This is, the, this is shown here as the GB zone. Oh, yeah, I, I did change it. And the, the intent many years ago, back in 2016, was that this would be called the BG zone for symmetry with, with the Valley Road zone, which is the BD zone. Business downtown and business general was the, the naming convention at the time. It, it didn't make sense to me to call it BG general business. <laughs> right, because you kind of flipped. Yeah, that's why I switched it. It just right. didn't make sense. But then it doesn't have symmetry with the no, other one. It doesn't have. To. Right, that's true. <laughs> At any rate, take that yeah. comment into consideration, <laughs> that, if you would, please. Right. I mean, uh, I mean, it, Liz, is there anything from from your professional perspective I, I as just, to? I was just double checking yeah. a couple other towns where I work, and, and nobody places their sort of utilities in their own zone. That everybody has it sort of incorporated into whatever the surrounding zone is. Mm -hmm. So that's not unusual. What I would suggest, rather than the GB or the BG, what about putting it in the what the adjoining zone which is the the BDO or something. Well, to the east is the the conservation zone. And in fact, the gas pumping station and the electric substations are all in the conservation zone because they're a part of it. So I suppose you could wrap the conservation zone around into it. then that'll be a whole other issue. I think it makes sense to put it in conservation because it's not really developable. I think that seems like a reasonable solution to this issue. Whatever. Okay. Is just adopt the zones, the zoning that, uh, this, that surrounds this area. So that would Considering be the fact that, it, that anything that happens in that property is going to be subject to uh, the fact that it's a conditional use. It has to come to a board regardless of what zone it's in. Yeah. 
And if it were to go away, it would probably be rezoned at that time anyway. In the conservation zone, the permitted uses would be a whole lot less. In other words, if it's in the B, B G zone, you could tear down the sewer plant and build a shopping mall. But if it's in the conservation zone, you couldn't. Not that anyone is suggesting tearing down the sewer plant. Right. <laughs> All right, I think we bludgeoned that one. <laughs> I'm. Um... <laughs> All right, to page nine. Uh, if you go to recommendation 2.4.3. We had made edits, but we just wanted to check one last time with respect to, I think we know what the response is gonna be as far as imposing architectural design standards in this master plan. So the issue here is the third bullet, providing, just removing this bullet, providing architectural design standards, emphasizing pedestrian oriented rather than highway style design characteristics. So the fundamental here is that the uh, that architectural standards are not permitted. You can't tell people how to build their building. You can suggest, you can advise, you can, if they come for site plan, you can tweak. Now we do have a section of the ordinance called architectural design standards, uh, which may not be enforceable. And we did spend a lot of time in 2016 revising the architectural standards until our attorney pointed out that that whole effort was unlawful. This is, you know, if you look at the recommendation, this is within the context of an area in need of rehabilitation mm -hmm. where you can have design guidelines. So the question right. was, do you want to keep it in here to sort of have some recommend, you know, some general design guidelines along Valley Road. If it don't say architectural, then there's no reason why this couldn't be site plan standards. Well, I have a recommendation. I looked at this again. Is it, it, to just remove the providing architectural design standards and just say emphasize pedestrian oriented rather than highway style design characteristics in the zone. Okay. Yeah, that sounds remove good. Remove the whole aura of dictating. That sounds good. Okay. So we'll just remove the first part of it and start with that. We and the township committee have a hard decision to make as to whether we should get rid of the current ordinance standards the current ordinance section called architectural standards because it truly is unlawful we just decided to leave it alone i think they could be wrapped into these different architectural standards within these areas in need of rehabilitation what we have to do is find a way to take it off the books and keep it right which i think you could do it that way and we need to revisit that in time. Okay. And maybe, maybe Don, that is a uh, another recommendation here, is to revisit the architectural standards handbook and establish a legitimatizing framework for the handbook. Because back in when Tom Bear was still on the board, uh, board. Uh, we did put this into two sections, an ordinance section and then an implementing handbook. The handbook is still valid. Mm -hmm. If we just keep it on the counter and don't try to enforce it through the ordinance. All right. Okay. So I figure we could incorporate that somewhere. That's, that's a good yeah. suggestion. I, yeah, I added it to one point. Right. Or 1.2 or something. 1.2. Okay, yeah, it should go up in the beginning. Yeah. So what would you, the, the, Dennis, you mentioned the, the, uh, the handbook that, that Tom Baer did? Yes. That's still around? The architectural standards? Oh, I got, I got copies of it. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, I think it's just Un unfortunately just about the time that we did that, Yolanta came on the scene and pointed out that we couldn't adopt that new revised ordinance because the whole thing was unlawful. And I said, well, should we pull the existing section out of the ordinance? And she said, yeah, just kind of leave it alone. No harm in leaving it there as long as nobody tries to enforce it. Then, but then why should it be there if, if, if it's not enforceable? We need to we need to reinvestigate with our new professional team. Right, that's all we're doing. We're not adopting anything. We're just investigating how that might be incorporated. It could come out. But do we want to incorporate it? Uh, I mean, it could. I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I was part of those design standards. I didn't necessarily agree with them. Oh. No. <laughs> it was like we were being dictated to by a group with certain with certain. Uh, preferences for design and well, uh, I don't know if there's a way I want to go. Maybe they went too far but that could be part of the dialogue because I've seen where they've worked pretty well with regards to setting some uniformity and some vision for what we want certain areas to look like. That's all. Not dictating. Okay. But that could I mean but, but the thing is that I don't know that those were necessarily anything we want to be pushing even now so if, if we want to do it and you say that there's a, you know, you've seen where it works, then then let's uh, let's start let's let's start fresh. Yeah, yeah, let's no, I, I don't think I, I think we were just using that as an example. I don't think we're talking about oh, we're evaluating that to incorporate. I think we're talking about right evaluating whether design right, that's, standards. That's not, all that's sense. not what I heard. Well, we cannot have an ordinance that regulates architectural design with one exception which doesn't apply to Long Hill. Uh, there's no reason why we can't have a handbook to guide applicants as to what the board would like to see when it sees a site plan. But the thing is that that was a board of, I don't know how many years ago, and I, I, I don't know that any board going from year to year, you can say, well, this is what we want to see. Well, I for example, you can't a pass a law that says you gotta have fenestration. But and so, but we can put, talk about yeah. fenestration in our handbook and say it would be nice if you honored yeah, but these I, guidelines. But that's what I'm saying. But, but you're given it some seal of official approval by 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 giving that, and I don't really know that 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 has any uh, relevance to any uh, particular <coughs> particular board. Maybe that board, but I don't know about this board. I, I, it's just I, I just don't think you should I don't think you should have something like that. Maybe something that you're, if you're starting from you know from whole cloth and and you're, and, and, you're and, you, and you want to try again, fair enough. It's something that's that's, that's not that. But yeah, to, 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 to I, I guess I misread. I thought that's what we were discussing was looking at the incorporation not of those standards necessarily. It's looking at the whole approach to, to adopting some sort of uniformity and vision for what the town wants. <laughs> well, as you, as you walk through any of our business districts, you will find that each and every building is a different style from the, its neighbor. And so the chances of finding <laughs> a single unifying style for any of the districts is very slim. So the question is, what is the generic direction that we're willing to accept? And, and I think the, uh, the other concept, too, that we had talked about as a committee was really embracing some of the branding that's really naturally happening amongst the different uh, um, hamlets and villages of the town. In other words, Gillette, uh, you know, uh, through some of the work that's been done um, is beginning to take on a certain look, okay? Millington, um, Sterling, etc. How do you embrace that? And I'm not saying to codify it, but to, to I, do you follow what I'm saying? Is no, that, no. And that's naturally happening, Brendan. That's not necessarily we're dictating. Right, but then let it naturally happen. <laughs> Yeah, but right, because because really, when you're looking, you're looking at say Millington, right? The only thing that's really happening in Millington is going to be Tifa. 
and so that's the that's yeah, what we then, want to hold Ellington to look like the uh, but there's going to the, be the uh, there's going to be other development coming on the heels of Tifa yeah but in to go into all to look so you want that all to look exactly the, it, but no the, I, I don't think model. architectural standards can be uh, embracing diversity in fact most architectural standards say do not create ultra uniformity right so that's kind of guiding really more heterogeneity than homogeneity and, i mean I, I think i'm you know this is the kind of thing that got us bogged down for years and that uh, this exactly this kind of argument or, or discussion let's say that that is why we've been so many years since we last had the master plan and and i think we're kind of entering into it again um i would i i would certainly be uh opposed to to having anything in there right now um, and 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 uh, you know let things just happen as they have been naturally. Okay. I mean, are there other opinions, guys? I mean, with regards to this. Yeah, I think some kind of guidance document is nice, but I don't think you're going to be able to achieve uniformity across the entire uh, community simply because of the fact you have different developments that have built over time. So you're going to have various stages of growth that have taken place over the over the years, and we're not an HOA, so that's you're not going to be able to get that kind of uh, discipline uh, spread throughout the community. Right. Uh, and, and, you're and, right yeah. with regards to new projects coming, and we've we've seen some of those diagrams already in place, and we have provided commentary back. Maybe it's nice to have some of those uh, comments. Captured somewhere, so it does give that recommendation guidance to anyone who's looking to develop here when you're looking at the bigger projects. All right. Yeah, and I think uh, just to re clarify, I think what we're looking for for the master plan is really just an objective and a recommendation to evaluate this. It's not to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, it, if we don't want to even evaluate it, then let's move on. So that that's really what people can weigh in on because. We're not suggesting the master plan to obviously do this. It would be to evaluate the use of architectural standards in yeah, some form. And I form. don't think we have the time this form. year. Right. We would not have the time this year to be right. taking or, that Well, remember, this is a 10-year plan, mm -hmm. so. Okay. That could be a byproduct to yeah. future work. I, listen, I don't feel, guys, I really am saying truthfully, I don't feel strongly one way or another. I'm really, if this is a consensus building, if, if I think we need to recognize also that the next construction in town, the next major constructions in town, will be big block residential buildings. Uh, 44 Plainfield was recently approved by the zoning board after they s went round and round on design and finally came up with a design that was uh, pleasing to the majority of the members of the zoning board. Uh, we went back and forth on design of the building uh, in Gillette, the elite uh, residential building in Gillette, uh, and got some amount of variety into the design of that building. But each one of those buildings is a unique situation on a unique shape lot. I think we're going to have a couple more of those come down the road before we get into the small uh, uh, retail or office type building and other than negotiating with the architect it's hard to imagine that we could come up with a standard that would apply to whatever the next application is right. okay so I mean I go back to goal number one which you're trying to encourage <laughs> efficiency and development to your point Brendan if, if this is going to be a bog things down and, and this is going to be a problem and not helpful to the boards, then I would suggest we, we leave it out. You know, or, or, uh, well, but but the, the area of need of rehabilitation yeah. is a whole different. But, but is the recommendation to remove them from the existing ordinance? Um, yeah. I would. Okay. That, that would be my, I mean, that would be my preference. Yeah. It shouldn't okay. be there for time. So maybe that's the recommendation. Quite frankly, is extract them out of the existing. Uh, and I can soften it somehow that some of okay. those guidelines can wind up and. No, I think it's a good discussion because I do see that this is, gets very subjective, very quickly to the whims of whoever is 
got the strongest voice. <laughs> and that's not necessarily the right way to handle that. Okay. I mean, what what is it that we're trying to avoid? Another Mike's Getting music? Getting bogged down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Getting bogged down and dictating what people should do and, you know. Um, and yet Mike's music is in play at the zoning board and probably will wind up looking pretty much the way it looks today. One of the problems with creating architectural standards is you've then got to be able to enforce them. Right. All right, well, let's move on to an even more challenging recommendation. Okay. <laughs> Page 10, recommendation 2.4.8 is encourage lot consolidation. Now just to set the context, so this is, this is in the context of, I gotta roll up to the maintain and enhance economic vitality and aesthetics of Valley Road and non-residential zones through supportive zoning and development regulations. So this is the Valley Road business district or what we're now deeming and encouraging to be called downtown Long Hill. Wow, well, silence. Maybe I, it's not so controversial. No, I, I, well, I highlighted it initially, I think, because to me, that sort of seems like something, the, especially on Valley Road, that the market will take care of that they'll, the market will consolidate lots if it makes sense and they'll do infill development if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, my next question would be, well, how? Why do you, how do you encourage lot consolidation? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, unless you say, well, for if you have, if you accumulate 15 acres, you can do, you know, more height or more density or more bone, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. But I, I'm not even sure if people are agreed on that. Hmm. I, I think some of this spurned from uh, the property just to the left of Primavera, that small right. yep, that property road. and next to it. And then we're looking at the, uh, I guess it's the uh, that residential uh, home that they're planning to build in that area. At least that was the application that came before us. So here you have two properties, the old car wash and the commercial building right to its right, they're being consolidated. And then we, the one to the right, this little rectangular piece of property that's nothing's being done with, that could have been an opportunity to consolidate. Maybe they would have had a better footprint to work with. Mm -hmm. um, there might be other instances of that as you work further down Valley Road, as you move more towards the thermoplastic site, there's some other buildings there that look like they're in some, some need of uh, and, and maybe DLC. Liz, you could help clarify because I I get this confused all the time. The difference between the infill comment, infill development versus lot consolidation, because I kind of think of that lot as being more of an infill issue. See, I I would <laughs> say infill is like if yeah, it's almost like fitting in a missing tooth or something right. like that. You have boom 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 space boom boom boom, and you want right. something to lodge. That's in what there. I think about with that rectangular and lot. And that's what you would get between Primavera and the. Two pr uh, properties. Yes. Right. With the, with the gap in between. Which, if you'd want to fill that gap, but I'm not sure that the zoning now doesn't allow that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and I think with lot consolidation, it would have been up to the developer of those other two lots to reach out to that third lot. Maybe they did, mm -hmm. and said, "Hey, we'll buy you out, and we can have a bigger lot." And that person said, "No." <laughs> Could be also the planning board may be making that recommendation by taking a look at what's left and right of the property in question. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I, I this, these recommendations to me seem very open-ended, and I just, I guess yeah. I didn't understand them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand the general idea, the but general, I, you right. know. But is this another factor where you really just let the real estate market I, I, dictate that, how that's going to happen? That's, that would be my recommendation. Right. Because so uh, to your point, how do we encourage it? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, without coming up with a convoluted or complicated bonus program or something like that that yeah. is going to be more case specific. So I would take it. Right. Well, I only come up with um, with one lot consolidation in the past 20 years, and 
And that's the uh, property on Main Avenue across from the hotel. I can't think of a second one. And so the real issue here is economics. Well, I think, I mean, unless anybody else has any other thoughts, I, I would say strike 2.48 and 2.49. Agreed. The market. We, we were just having a, a yeah. apologies, a little bit of a sidebar right. conversation, but that, that car wash, I believe, was a, a redevelopment project where we did get a report. Maybe in that report, they could have told us what was left and what was right, and mm -hmm. maybe we could have had a, 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 a greater conversation that could have approached the applicant to say, is this a possible? Mm -hmm. We could even go to Primavera and say, you know, I got this little lot here, and you mm -hmm. could expand and have a better en a greater entrance into your into your property. Right. Um, yeah. So right. kind of like the thought we were kicking around. Yeah, is right. that is the lot buildable as it is? I yeah. Mean, it's yeah. a deep, I mean, narrow lot. No so assessment without, really without being done. consolidated. It's, it's an unknown. Right. It's a buffer. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Let's move on to then the next page. Page. So the recommendation 11. is to remove. Yes. Two point four eight. Yes. Uh, do you want to talk about infill? Well, we kind of did. I said remove it. Kind of We've got so very few infill situations in town. Um, I'm not sure where I would go to start encouraging infill. That's why I think we should just strike it. Give me an example of a vacant lot that shouldn't be a vacant lot. Main right. Avenue. <laughs> that one on Main Avenue was a right. perfect example. It's not a vacant lot. Isn't one of them? No? The one by nope. Primavera? Nope, one's got an apartment house and the other's got a no. derelict general store. Yeah, all right. Which was transformed into a doctor's office. No, there, there are vacant, apparently vacant properties, but they are in, in fact the side yards on the same lot as a principal building. For example, the yellow building uh, three blocks south, uh, which appears to be a vacant house, it's actually owned by an electrical contractor who's using it as an office, but there's a vacant lot between that and the beauty salon next door. Uh, but it's part of the same lot. It's not really an infill situation. It just happens to be a large lot with a large side yard. Similarly, um, uh, next to Primavera, there is what appears to be a vacant lot, but it's really just a, par a parking lot and a bridal gazebo and a lot of vacant space. It's not really an infill situation. All right, I think that's for validation to strike that. So, Can we move uh, over just a bit uh, to the east and talk about Morristown Road? So this is the recommendation. It, 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 I just realized I screwed something up. It should, it should be, no. it should be two, four, well, it should be two point four point eleven, I think. Yeah, oh, the number. Well, we'll the fix number all got the number. Screwed up. I apologize. Well, no, you have two point four point seven, and then, and then two point four point eight. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's fine. I think you did fix it. It was eleven. Okay, so it's 2.4.8, and this is the recommendation to establish a conservation development overlay zone, which permits, these are the uses along Morristown Road as you head out toward the rail line on the right-hand side past the farm, Lombardo's farm. <coughs> and the, the use, pretty Leo diverse Lyon. use. So by Leo <laughs> Uh, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, this has been, my understanding, a challenge for years and, and continues to come up a lot. So, a promise made is a debt unpaid. <coughs> the owner of the largest property in that block, Bill Stroh, was cited by the zoning officer for 
running a couple of uh, tenant businesses in the back of his lot. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got about a three or four acre lot there right in the middle of that stretch. And he was taken to court by, and we're going back now eight, nine, ten years. He was taken to court by the zoning official at the time, the enforcement official. And he pleaded that these were businesses that were established when that whole strip of land under the previous master plan had been zoned ED, economic development. Uh, we had ED zones in town. What is now Cander Park was an ED zone at, in the prior zoning map, as was the entire west side of, or east side of Morristown Road. In the, and, and there, was, there were farms along there. There's an industrial building sort of built on stilts because it floods, which has been vacant for a number of years. Um, there's the uh, Lombardo Farms, which is an undersized lot for the conservation zone. But in the 1997 master plan, that whole strip of land on the east side uh, of Morristown Road was rezoned conservation, quote, because the property across the street is conservation, mm -hmm. i.e. what is now mm -hmm. Central Park. Uh, and, and by rezoning, they put all the industrial and uh, uh, commercial uses in jeopardy. Well, Bill Stroh was the first to catch it from the zoning officer, and he went to court and he pleaded with the judge that these were pre-existing uses uh, prior to the master plan, and they should be reestablished. Well, if you actually look at the uses on those seven lots, five of them are not have non-residential uses on them, and. Uh, Bill came to the planning board way back when, we can find it in the minutes, and pleaded to have that whole strip rezoned so that his uses and the uses of four of his neighbors would become lawful. And the zoning board said, we're going to handle it in the next master plan, but in the meantime, you need to provide some expert testimony from a pro professional planner. And Bill Stroh actually put up money, I think $1,500, to pay for a professional planner to come in and do an analysis of that strip of land. And the analysis was we got to do an industrial overlay or commercial overlay or call it whatever you want. And that went into the, the master plan way back in, two, or the draft back in 2015 and has been on the draft ever since. And every time it comes up, I have to repeat, a promise made is a debt unpaid. We told Bill Stroh that we would handle this in the next master plan, and we took his money. Okay. Did we incorporate everything that came out of that study in here? I, you know, I see, like, for example, we, we didn't um, identify the minimum acreage in this. I see that we have an insert. Well, the light industrial overlay that we proposed, actually, I think we in this 2016 draft, we called it the, uh, 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 the Morristown Road industrial overlay, but whatever, uh, that overlay would have reduced bulk in it. And so the, if you wanted to, if you wanted to use one of the uses, one of the permitted uses in the overlay, you'd be uh, permitted the reduced uh, acreage and the bulk standards for the right. overlay. It probably never should have been zoned commercial, or sorry, conservation in the first place because the reason was rather flimsy. The land across the street is conservation, so this should be conservation. Um, 
On the other hand, the economic development zones disappeared in that master plan, and you couldn't just kind of leave this. It's a shame, however, when you create an economic development zone because you want to encourage economic development, and then when you get it, you change the zoning under, out from underneath them. What kind of business is that? So this just reestablishes the legitimacy of those uh, businesses that currently operate in that strip of land. If you start at the railroad, you've got the, uh, the uh, Leo the Lion property, which is now being used as a construction yard. And uh, then you've got a residence, then you've got the Bill Stroh property, which has got a, uh, buildings in the back, which are used by contractors for storage and, and uh, office space. Uh, you've got the, uh, uh, I forget the name of the company that used to occupy that building that's on stilts, which has been vacant for so long. You've got Lombardo Farms, <coughs> which would be legitimate in the conservation zone, except for the fact that it's not three acres, it's an undersized plot. And then uh, at the bottom of that strip, you've got the uh, sewer pumping station, which is a grossly undersized lot for the C zone. Okay, so, so I think that's a good summary, Dennis. Let's just have some discussion around then the terminology, because if we define which this is clearly doing the conservation development overlay, I don't see a problem with calling it that. I mean, because we could debate all kinds of different names as long as it's defined and makes some sense, right? Yeah, we yeah. may want to, we may want to tinker with yeah. whether this is an industrial overlay or a commercial overlay, but that would mean uh, go, going out and taking a close look at the uses that are currently there and deciding whether it's industrial or commercial. Uh, another alternative would be to just blot out the conservation zone entirely and, re and return it to commercial, except you're stuck yeah. with a couple of residences on that strip. Yeah, I, I think that's... Uh, and in fact, both Lombardo Farms and the Stroh property do have residents on them as well as their commercial use. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so it's it's a delicate balance. It, and but is there a problem, even though the term is a little strange, conservation development, but the conser by calling it conservation development overlay, at least it, it maintains some distinctness that calls for definition of which we would be providing. Yeah. Actually, it's a mixed-use zone. There's not much difference topologically between this zone and uh, Myersville. Myersville's got the same mix of uses and residences as this uh, strip of land and about the same number of lots. <coughs> the only thing that's missing is a church. So you can tinker with it, but we do have to honor the commitment that this board made to uh, to Bill Stroh many, many years ago. I mean, one thing to get out of conservation is, is I mean, would we be so bold just to call it Morristown Road Development Overlay? Yeah, I think that I makes just, sense. Just to <laughs> call it what it is because it's unique to that particular area. I'm, I'm not sure and I'm just not sure whether we want to encourage development uses there. Yeah. But we do have to legitimatize the uses yes. that were built in good faith when it was an economic development zone. Yes. Or do we want to encourage? Yeah, that's my question. Do, do, uh, if, if these became vacant, would you want them to be re redeveloped or retenanted with these types of uses or would you rather they be residential let's say only well the problem is that five of the seven lots do have residential uses houses on them even though some of them have both houses and industrial in the back <coughs> we, we've got to deal with preserving the five of the seven lots that have residences on them what 
what if you zone them the res because it abuts a residential zone and what if you zone them residential with this overlay that permits them to have non-residential uses well is it really a mixed use zone as opposed to an overlay i mean is it the same as as uh, sterling or a, a millington in terms of mixed uses but we don't want to encourage mixed use stripped out in that area of Morristown Road, from my perspective, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's just it's it makes more sense for the residential use that's occurring there now. <laughs> yeah. My recommendation was that you zone it R three, and then put that overlay because those lots are larger than the R threes next to them. It looks like. Yeah. yeah, it's better than my suggestion, yep. which is call it the Letha zone. The what zone? Letha. Oh. Letha. Leave it the hell alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, um, Liz. Is there anything else that we need then? So the no, acres, the least, the least amount of acre size. Well, I think it's actually if we're making it R thirty, we're gonna increase it. <laughs> Okay. So it'll, I, I just, it would, oh, look. So the R3 zone would make I, sense. The R30, right? R3, R3, I'm part R3. of the R3. And right. then um, let me just take a look and see what the existing lots are. Okay. All right, are we good, guys? You're still with us? Yep. <laughs> okay. Next, ex objective 2.5. Um, this is in. Um, Context is identifying opportunities for public gathering places in the commercial areas. We just wanted to flag this. We didn't fully kind of hit all these. We kind of ran out of steam the last time. Just wanted to check in and make sure people were, were fine with where we were going with that. Are we talking we about a place to hold open air public protests? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Now, I think, you know, the, the, the concept here, too, and it kind of relates back to kind of some of the adjustments we did make, is for the master plan to kind of help identify different things that we would ask of developers as they were approaching us for significant developments, is that we would have some context from our master plan to provide information as to yeah, we'll, we'll give you these variances if you give us X. I mean, this happens all the time in big cities. In fact, that's how New York, you see all these much taller buildings, they're building parks to allow them to go higher with their skyscrapers. That's the biggest quid pro quo that happens in the cities, is usually height. But there's other things that could be uh, adjusted as far as bulk standards or bulk variances the different properties. This was really more generic just in regards to identifying. Well, my, cons that. my concern with this objective and recommended, no, the objective yeah. is fine, but is that if you start identifying private property <laughs> and say, well, this would be a good place, you know, do you know right. what I mean? And so I would, that, that's kind of why I would want to stay away from it. And it, it, it more be, um, in that section that we have, if you have this, you know, major developments, that there be open space as part of that redevelopment. Mm -hmm. But I just, that was. I that think I think you know. I mean, we were specifically, I think, thinking around Valley Mall. Yeah. When yeah. this came up, is what could be done with these vast spaces for encouraging more public gathering. But I do hear you in regards to having public things on private property. Well, because there's always the front the lawn of town. There's the front lawn of town hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think, well, yeah. My my gut is to say, and I don't even know <clears> if we want to put it in here, but it would be to like to work with the owner of Valley Mall and say, can we do some event on your using mm -hmm. your parking area mm. on a Sunday or something like that? Right. I, but that's yeah. being done with like the Boy Scouts of America, where they're selling uh, flowers right. for Mother's Day. So right. Or if you wanted to do a farmers market, that's right, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Food trucks. Yeah. 
So you're program. suggesting we, this probably doesn't need to necessarily be in the I, I just it, it, it made me nervous. <laughs> okay. Because I, just because I wasn't sure. I don't exactly know what with the, the downtown epicenter between Poplar and Plainfield on the north side of Valley Road. I was looking at it, but that all looked like private property mm -hmm. to me. Uh, so it just, just, if I were the owner of that private property, I would be annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> well, could we right. specify that this would be more looking, uh, you know, and, and maybe this is counterproductive, is that instead of it insinuating this would be happening on private property, but it'd be happening on municipal owned land. Yeah, municipal owned land or in cooperation with any willing property owners or something like that. Yeah. But then it wouldn't be permanent. But. Right. Because the intent was to create more public gallery. But see the conundrum in fact the dictating or, or imposing on private property owners I think is a problem not to mention I think a lot of private property owners are going to say what are you doing and who's paying for my liability insurance right. <laughs> you know what I, I misread this because I didn't read private property into this at all I just assumed you were talking about public property and if, if well, the we say we use the word commercial areas, so that has a private property connotation. So well, in the commercial areas, we've got a, a parkland set aside at the corner of Main and Valley, where we've torn down two buildings in the past couple of years. That's slated to become public parkland and would be a great gathering place within the Valley Business District. Yeah, you have to kind of go back up to the we've got We've got a huge public gathering space that we use only once a year for the Morristown or the Myersville tree lighting, but we use parking lots uh, all over the circle, Myersville circle area for a public gathering. And Maybe of course we have a street fair in Sterling Maybe we maybe the thing that's throwing us is the interpretation of the commercial areas, because I don't think anybody would want to discourage opportunities for public gathering spaces. It's on private property, and maybe we just can we just delete in the commercial areas. So the objective is identifying opportunities for public gathering spaces. Yeah, I would full stop it right there. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Because Tom, if you recall, one of our one of our members was pretty vocal about trying okay. to have that in there. I think he would be disappointed. Well, I, and that came around the TIFA uh, yes. project where yes, they were looking right. for You're absolutely right, uh, opportunities Tom. there to create public yep. space. You know. So that's that's where you saw a lot of that. Right. That, you, that, that was also commercial right. with uh, residential mixed right. use there. And okay. I think I think it's appropriate when like there's <coughs> negotiations sort of between a, yes. a potential major development. Mm -hmm. But I think that, and I think that's fine. And maybe mm -hmm. that's that's how we change the recommendation, to sort of you know as part of any conversation. Yeah, or major or redevelopments or whatever, something yeah. like that, yeah. or you right. know opportunities. <laughs> And that opportunity really falls on the planning board to, to uncover that, yeah. you know, and have that conversation yeah. and engagement. And so rather than, because my, my concern was more with the recommendation that if we're identifying private property, which I thought those, that was, right. unless I'm wrong. Yeah, and then, you know, really then the recommendation from that objective is next. That's part of this whole discussion was trying to come up with a better way to really deal with the center from Poplar and Plainfield, north and south side of Valley Road, connecting with Valley Mall, that whole area there is trying to get a better flow to that area in regards to, like for example, I think we use the example all the time, it's very awkward if you were to park over near the Dunkin' Donuts and walk to Panera. You, there's no way to do it. 
but then you're unfortunately that's all private property <laughs> so how do you affect change well you do it when, you do it when you approve their site plans right. years ago <laughs> right you anticipate so, it well and that's that is part of the plan is that but how do we put that in in a master plan so we can uh, so when valley mall would be redeveloped you'd have something you, just, you could say something pretty innocuous like maximize opportunities <laughs> right <laughs> or you know take advantage of opportunities when opportunities right. arise well and again going back to the objective it's identifying opportunities for public gathering spaces so do we even need 2.5.1 which gets very specific yeah, I, w I think we should have a recommendation under the objective, and I think it can be, I can come up with something that's a little softer. Okay. I mean, maybe too soft for Dennis. I mean, do you get, everybody read this recommendation 2.5.1. I mean, if you have any questions, I could try to provide some more. What we were at least attempting to do there. You know, Even just walking from Valley Mall, we were talking about this, walking from Valley Mall to the library. It's very awkward. You're walking behind the first aid squad. I think you can get through back there. It's just, I think there's a sidewalk, but no one, but there's sidewalk, I don't think it really is continuous across the first aid squad, is it? Yes. The sidewalk goes yeah, across yeah. the first aid squad. Yeah. I guess you could go out on, on the sidewalks. street. Well, you don't want to walk from the, you don't want to walk behind the first aid squad unless you try to get through their parking lot. I just see kids walk cutting through there all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the problem the problem is you're talking about the truck area behind Valley Mall and there's all kinds of liability issues of yes. encouraging pedestrians to walk through delivery truck area. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I, I'm not saying to encourage that. I'm just saying that's what's happening with regards to Beyond coming it. up with a, yeah. what, it, could we come up with a safer way to create better circulation yeah. and connections? The walking in front of Valley Mall gets real sketchy too. I, I, I've done it my share. There's, there's cars coming in and out. Yeah. You have to right. walk, go right. And, I think a, a sidewalk eventually across the street is going to be crucial. Mm -hmm. With a crossing the park side. Yes. Right. With a cross coming o crossing coming right. over. Right. That could be a recommendation we put in with either the circulation element or that's, the. I was just thinking about the circulation yeah. element. The maybe circulation that's, element maybe that's might something be better that could be a, a point or two. And how are you going to handle the sidewalk uh, between the Elks Club and Sovereign Bank? You want a sidewalk oh. there? Mm. Right from Mike's. Yeah. I think if it's possible, a sidewalk that goes from Main Avenue all the way down on that side of the street oh. would be great. Except you got to get past Mike's, and you can't put a sidewalk <laughs> in front of Mike's. Panera, right there's no, through wind, no, there's no room at all. I really haven't examined it that closely. Yeah. The state has lots of money. We'll build a bridge over Mike. I, I guess you're going to have to go. You, you'll have to cross there. You, you know, yeah. yeah. Cross it back. And come back over. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll address some of these things. Park some of those discussions when we get to the circulation element, which is coming. But uh, in the meantime, so Liz, maybe you could help yeah. come up with just a, a recommendation under that objective. Yeah, that's with fine. The, with the edited objective. Yeah, and I, I can sort of say somewhere in that area. Right. <laughs> would be good, yeah. Exactly. Okay. okay. Didn't uh, we discuss last summer whether or not Valley Road was ever going to become a walkable district as opposed to a car district? Didn't we decide that walkability on Valley Road, we had a discussion about July or August of last year on the very subject of how to characterize Valley Road. I think we uh, talked about it during the circulation element. Mm -hmm. And there were many challenges with Valley Road trying to to achieve a cohesive sidewalk or walkability or pedestrian type um, uh, way for people to move up and down to, to up and down Valley Road. One side of the road, the south side, you can have 
a continuous sidewalk, but on the other side, not so much. There's areas where it kind of becomes a real challenge in front of Panera, along Panera, along uh, uh, the drugstore, and, and Mike's. It all becomes a challenge. There's not even enough for right. cars and bikes to, to safely move down that road. Yeah, well, let's, let's, let's park that discussion for the circulation element. But, you know, there was my recollection distinctly as we backed off of making that a very pedestrian focused area just because, because of the, the concerns you're raising yep. and the safety issues and yep. challenges yep. and focus more in other areas for pedestrian or multimodal transportation not necessarily valley mm -hmm. but if we're going to have that central park there there's just a part of me that feels as if if it was possible you know to have people be able to walk there Encourage, you know what I, I mean? I think there's enough areas to create yeah. pedestrian walkway to Central Park and crossovers, but you're gonna, if you're looking for uh, um, east-west on the north side of Valley Road, one continuous sidewalk, you're gonna oh. have a challenge. Right. That's what's And tough. is somebody but from crossing, Millington gonna walk Crossing to from Central south Park. to north, right. you'll have multiple areas. Because you're gonna have that access way over by the drugstore, you're gonna have out here in front of uh, the town, uh, hall. town Hall, and, and that whole stretch, uh, right. You're going to have areas to cross over. What's, what's nice over uh, by uh, the, the drugstore is you've got a traffic light. You've got a traffic light right. here. So if you help yeah. that, uh, where the challenge will be is where there is no traffic light. You don't right. want to promote people crossing over, jaywalking across to get to the park. Yeah. And you're going to have that. We're going to have That's going to happen. People are going to cross over uh, between uh, the actual crossovers. We're going to see that. And so Valley Road is tough. That's a tough cross. That's, that's a, a dangerous cross. That in some areas, it's three to four lanes wide. Yes. You know, turning lanes. Agreed. That won't happen if there's the entrances to the park or the traffic lights. Yeah, there's ways control. to encourage right. nobody's yeah. walking. And, you know, if you don't put a sidewalk between this traffic light and the next traffic light, and you've got bushes or some shrubbery or something barrier that's kind of keeping people from actually walking on that, yes. then you'll, you'll encourage and people to use the entrances. Got it. Agreed. Okay, can I focus us right back to, in general, did anybody else have any other, we've gone through the marginal comments, did anybody else have any ad additional comments they wanted to make to this draft? You'll, you're going to see it again um, as we before we approve it, but we just wanted to capture your thoughts on this draft so that we can move on. Our, my, my next goal is to, by August 9th, really come back with an historic element draft that we can discuss with recommendations? <clears throat> uh, yeah. With all due respect, historic uh, preservation is probably not as important as recreation, open space, some of the meat objects. Well, our, our committee felt differently from the standpoint of there were a number of things that still needed to be addressed and discussed amongst the planning board. So. Please respect our order of things because we've already initiated our review and focus on that. So we'd like to complete Yeah, but that. what my question is, right. given uh, when are we going to see the meat and potatoes, circulation, recreation, open space, utilities, all those other elements? I know that, I know that there's a, a, a certain magic associated with historic preservation, but that's pretty well under control. We've got a lot of open ends in recreation. We've got a lot of open ends in open space. The township committee keeps talking about buying open space and, and going about doing that. And uh, it's, it's not under control of the master plan. Uh, when are we going to get to those meat and potatoes issues? Coming up after the historic element, September. Well, remember in September we got a couple of uh, we got a couple of applications stacked up for hearing in September. Like we may not be able to get to the master plan in September. I guess we'll be busy. <laughs> but, um, Mr. Richardson, is it fair to say that some of these items that uh, in these other like circulation and the, and the, the, the program you put together is is desi designed to? Complete some of this activity in a timely fashion, like 
circular. We talked about it last year. Yeah, no. A it, lot yeah. of work was done into it, or put into it. There's still some questions around. Some work still needs to be done, but they're closer to the finish line where we where we didn't even touch land use last year. Exactly. That is why we focused okay. on land that's, use. I, that's what I thought our first. the goal was. Absolutely. Yeah. So our 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 impression. And I feel like we all agreed as a master plan is that we wanted to tackle the historic element next because that had some open issues. But we that's will, near completion as well. It is. Right. And, so and we, we get some quick wins and, while and, we continue to work on this. Heavy and, stuff. and and you know what? I mean, listen. If if we're comfortable, and and this is a board decision too, we'll try to layer in a few more of the elements in our next meeting. Um, and if we really feel, I wasn't under the impression that everything was nicely packaged and settled on historic element. But if I'm wrong, let me know now and we'll have a shorter conversation about historic element and move on. I wasn't really, I was hoping that we didn't have to dedicate so you, a whole So, so you have the historic, yeah, the historic element. And if that's done, what would be next? Do you have another element ready to go? Because if we yes. knock out two in one night? Yeah. Or, or do one and start another yeah, I on think the same we, night? I think we could look at that because we've got a number. Now we're starting to go into ones that were really pretty well baked. Right. With some issues that need to, pointed issues that need to be resolved. Right. But it's not but like we're, we're not starting from scratch. Those, we're focused on those pointed issues. We're not Correct. starting from scratch. We're not looking at right. it for the first time. And keep in mind too, the land use element is the the, the element required by municipal land use law that you mm -hmm. have to have. So we're trying to get the ones yep. cooked. Okay. And, and, That's and the priority. Well that Those system. that have to be done exactly. should be put up front, and then everything else should fall in behind it. Exactly. Okay. So um, duly noted. I, I, I will. We're going to connect with them as a master plan, and we'll look to see what other elements we can tee up for the ninth of August. Yep. Okay, yep. so to, to relieve some of the pressure into September. Because yep. the goal would be really by certainly October, we would be done with working through all of the framework and then it's just sit down and put the rest of the plan together. Right. So that by November, December, we're looking at now drafts and having hearings associated with that. That would be the goal. So, so the one request that I had, and you probably saw it in the e tone of the email that I sent following uh, uh, Deborah's email this morning, um, is can we get the material at least a day before? Because when it was sent to me, it was sent to my personal account, which is where it's supposed to go, but I was working in the office and could not read the attachments and mm -hmm. I cannot forward to my business uh, to, to my work email mm -hmm. I would get in trouble for doing that so at that point I was at a loss mm -hmm. for trying to figure out where we we're going to be now thankfully it was just following up on some recommendations but if you send out a heavy pack on the same day that's going to be reviewed yeah. I'm not going to be able to be yeah and very keep in mind we're, we're wrestling with vacation I get and all it. kinds I of get other it. things so it was as soon as we could get it out to everyone okay. in, in advance okay. of the meeting. So we will certainly try to do a better job. Okay. And, and then please do that because I don't want Tom to be as grumpy as he's been <laughs> the last couple of days. <laughs> I got my grumpy pants yeah, today. With that, is there a way to send documents as PDFs? Because I, ca I can't open the win data either. These, uh, were, these were PDFs. These, we, they were PDFs. Yeah, these, are PDFs. these were all PDFs. When you send the emails, they don't come through as PDFs. Well, then true. you have to say there's something wrong with your system on your end. Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Where do they come in at? They came out, come out as windows. I, I had somebody else recently have the same problem, and it was a system update, a system update required on their end. Okay, so it's just I on my phone, so I'll have to look into it. Yeah. Right. And a lot of times I print right from the phone. I can't open it. Okay, that's all I have this evening. Does anybody have any other business, old or new, that they would like to discuss? It's you nine o'clock. Got to figure out a way to silence some of your things, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. You Say again. Many, you got too many noises <laughs> going on over on that side of the dais. <laughs> Do you need help figuring out how to silence these things, or, or you like hearing them? The email system. 
Yes, but we ask everybody to silence them, so yeah. I'm not really sure why the chairman doesn't AOL silence it. Yeah. Email. We got we got to come up with a way to silence all your fire reminders. <laughs> yes, it's a Gmail. I could just turn it off. I'd rather well, put my thumb over the yeah. speaker. <laughs> but at any rate, it's nine o'clock. What's yeah. next? Yeah, it's a Gmail. Adjournment. Uh, so maybe Gmail is converting it. Do I have a volunteer? So I have a, mo I have a motion to uh, adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. Aye. Thanks.